Hi, welcome to Berwick Mitsubishi. My name's Tim. Today we're doing a walk around video of our 2014 MI15 Jeep Cherokee Limited in Diesel. Now I know that was a mouthful, but that's the best way to describe this car. In this video, we're going to go around the outside of the car, go through the quality of the vehicle, the paint, um, and all the point out anything on the exterior that, that you should know about. Uh, go into the interior, go through a lot of the features. Being limited, this is packed full of the features um, and the quality of the interior as well. I'll start off by saying the Jeep uh, Cherokee Limited is the top of the range in the Cherokee, and the sought-after two-liter diesel motor in this was very, very popular. The colour of this one, uh, I don't know how dark it's going to appear on the camera, but this is the uh, the granite colour as well, which is not black, but it's a dark grey and it's got a beautiful sparkle to it. There is a little bit of dust around in the air due to construction behind us, but if I, I don't know how well you can see it on the uh, camera, but it does have a real sparkle to it, especially in that bright sun. Uh, looking at the front of the Jeep, we do have our seven slot grill, which is standard across the Jeep range because Jeep were the first cars to ever drive on all seven continents. And being the limited, we do have chrome all around each slot of the grill and down around the front as well. With this car, we do have this down here, which is our adaptive cruise control sensor, which is very good to see. Now, the sleek sort of rounded off on the front, it does confuse some people. You get LED daytime running lights around the side here, and your indicator's here, not your headlight, that's your indicator. Your headlight is actually down here, which is still quite bright. You do have your washers here because it does go over that luminescence being uh, very bright, so it does legally require one of those. And just down here, we've got our fog light as well. This car being a 4x4, it is very, very capable. So we do have, and the bottom of our bumper is this hardened plastic rather than the gloss paint, uh, paint uh, finish, which is very good. So then if you do take it off-road or to a campsite or something, and you do happen to scratch it a little bit, it's only the plastic you're scratching, uh, not, not the paint, which is good to see as well. We do have front colour-coded... Um, front parking sensors, that's the word I was looking for as well, across the front there. As far as stone chips go, I uh, might have seen maybe there's one here, uh, two or three, but they've been touched up and they don't really stand out at all. Um, so yeah, we're going to start walking around the car now. Now we're looking at our first wheel, over here we do have nice deep, looks to be, it's got a little stubble, nice deep tread, looks to be a brand new rim. Now this nice chrome alloy rim stands out greatly against the granite colour um, and there's no scuffing apparent on that rim either. Moving down the car, you'll see you do have your side indicators built into the mirror here and a colour coded mirror cap. Your Cherokee badge on the door, just like the Grand Cherokee, this car's uh, bigger brother. Uh, this car isn't as big as the Grand Cherokee but it is quite a nice size, it's similar to the uh, uh, CX-7 in size, which is very good to see. It's, it's not small at all. Uh, I'm, I'm six foot one and it does still come up quite high. We do have these two roof racks here, which can be easily removed, um, just taken off, and then it's, you've just got the uh, bar down the top of the car here. Now moving down the car itself, you'll see we do have a chrome finish around the outside of the windows, really breaking up the nice dark colour. We've got our diesel fuel filler cap over here on the driver's side just above our second wheel that we're going to take a look at with once again practically brand new tyre tread and no scuffing on this rim either. So now we're going to move around the back of the car. You'll see that the rounded shape at the front that comes to a point, still rounded at the back but nice and big as well, a bit, bit more broad, gives it a, a sort of, when you look at the car from the side, a nice shape to it all. We've got the red tail lights which come across the back of the boot here, our built-in reverse camera which is nice and sleek to the back of the car considering there's no handle up here, you actually open it from down the bottom. Uh, we got our limited and our diesel badging on the back just below our 4x4. We are fitted with a tow bar. Now the tow bar on this car with uh, electric brakes, you can tow up to a maximum. They, they were really specific about this Jeep. They could have just said uh, two, 2,400, but they actually went to the effort of saying 2,393. So <laughs> they, they, they put in a lot of effort there. Being the limited, you press the button here, it beeps three times, gives a little flash, and up goes the boot as well, which is very, very good to see. Looking in the back, we do have our floor mats just sitting here because this car has just been cleaned. There are a couple of light scratches I'll point out to you in the back here. This car is a five-seater. Under here, being a Jeep, they're built for practicality. So you've actually got a nice, really strong base here. So if you do load things in the boot, you don't have to worry about it pushing through like uh, with some cars, the way that they're designed. We've got all our tools in here and our full-size spare wheel as well, which is very good to see. Closing that down, over here on the left, we've got a 12-volt socket and our button that we use to close the, uh, the, the boot lid. So all we do is press that and it will beep a couple of times and then down the boot lid goes, which is very, very handy. One thing I will show, show to you right now is while, while we are around the back, we do have two keys with this car. And on here, you'll see we've got a button that's got the times two on it. If we press that twice, the boot will open. And you can close it the same way as well, which is very handy. You can actually open it as you're approaching the car and then just throw what you need to into the car. Um, yeah, like I said, 
very handy, uh, many, many applications. I will point out at this point in time as well that this car does have another one which is here with the times two. You can actually start this car without getting into it. You click it twice, it'll flash, the doors will lock, give it a few seconds and the car actually fires up. Now this would be very handy on cold or very hot days because you can start up the car remotely and get that heater or the air conditioner cranking right away. And then if you decide to turn it off, you just click the same button again twice and the car shuts down. So it's very, very good, very handy, a nice feature into the, uh, into the Limited. Moving around now to the passenger side, looking down the passenger side itself, there are some minor scuffs just here on the door which are the first real marks I've seen on, the, on this car uh, this whole time, which is very good to see. We're gonna move down there and look at our third wheel. On this wheel, there appears to be, once again, no scruffing with a practically brand new tire. This car's presenting very, very well. Being a 2014 MY15, it's been very, very well looked after, and it's just like, they've gone to a lot of care since they bought this car, which is very good to see. Uh, over here, we got our nice indicator in the mirror again with our color-coded side caps. Now, it's common to get stone chips on uh, mirror caps here, but this doesn't have any, which is another good good sign. Just, once again, a testament to the old owner. Looking at our another wheel here, once again, practically brand new tire. This is the wheel which is most prone to getting scuffing, being the front passenger, but this also has no scuffing on it whatsoever. So we're gonna come around now to the front. We're gonna pop the bonnet. We're gonna have a look at our two liter diesel engine, which powers this car. I just remembered I locked it. Let me, there we go. And, yep. There it is. I just have to reach a bit further underneath to get the uh, release latch there. So this actually lifts up from underneath the grill here. And you've just got a little handle that you squeeze and up it comes with the hydraulic lift. Now, they've got a lot of plastic covers in here really protecting everything. Um, and there it is, our two liter diesel engine. Now this engine, um, like I said, it, it can tow. Uh, nearly just under 2.4 tonnes, which is very, very good. Uh, it does put out 125 kilowatts and 350 newton metres of torque. Behind this 2 litre diesel, uh, we do have a 9-speed automatic transmission, which is just very, very smooth to drive. It's seamless through the gears. You don't feel it kick down in that too much, and it does give the car a nice little bit of get up and go. Now, like I mentioned, this is a 4x4. It's not an all-wheel drive car. It's a four-wheel drive car. So that means it's actually got some use off-road, and it really is quite capable. We also have a 60-litre tank, with this diesel engine and combination, we can average around 5.8 litres per 100 k's or a maximum average of 1,034 kilometres from a full tank of fuel. All right, now moving to the interior of our limited vehicle does have a lot of features. Uh, very, very comfortable to sit in. The leather seats are just amazing in this range. They really, this by far was, uh, I reckon, is the best value for money when looking through the Jeep range. So we'll start to my right and work our way across. Over here, we've got our side mirror controls and a button to fold them in, which is good for parking. Or if we, uh, if we are, do go off-road and we do need to get through some tree branches as well. Here, we've got our full electric window control with child lock and a lock and unlock button for all the doors because when Jeeps hit 30 k now they do automatically lock. Now moving the steering wheel to the right, under here we do have our headlight control with automatic headlights and we've got a boot release button just here as well. Being an American made car, on the right control arm we've got our front and rear windscreen wipers and on the left control arm we've got our indicator. Now this key ignition is here on the left, you just pop your key into the little slot and start it up which is very nice and convenient. On the steering wheel itself, it's a very nice leather wrapped steering wheel, very comfy to hold. On the back of the steering wheel, which you can't see, we've got volume control on the right, and we can skip radio, radio station and tracks from our Bluetooth streaming or CD on the left here. On the right hand side, we've got cruise control settings with our adaptive cruise control distance adjustment. Over here, we've got full voice control as well as control for the display. So the display in the middle of the cluster in front of me can actually display a whole lot of things and it's got a nice brushed uh, look to it, like a brushed me metallic finish behind it, which is just up on the LED display, and it just really finishes off that, that instrument cluster very nicely. Nice, bright, easy to read. Uh, yeah, I, I really, like I said, I'm a big fan of these cars. Now, moving over here, I'll just point out this does have full voice control. You can ask it to give you directions, or call someone, or even change radio station. So if I hit this button, 104.3 FM, Tuning to 104.3 FM. And there's a radio station changed. You don't have to touch any buttons. Don't have to take your attention away from the road. It's all done, all good, ready to go. Now moving to the middle of the car, I'll point out up here, 
We've got this nice little storage compartment here. A lot of people use that for their sunglasses, but you could really use it for anything you want. Little release button to, to pop it up and it just slots back down. Nice leather finish on top of the dash here with white stitching throughout. Just down from that, we've got our big Uconnect touch screen. Being the limited, this has got the upgraded large screen as well. Uh, over here, we've got our sat nav. Look how responsive it is to when I click. I just wanted to show you how clear the sat nav was. Over here, we've got our radio settings. Then we go to our media settings for our Bluetooth streaming USB SD card auxiliary. Moving to the next one, we've got our heated and ventilated seats, which is very, very good to have. Um, and yeah, it's just, you control it from here for both the front passenger and the driver. Now climate control here is full dual zone climate control. Just hit on and it will fire up. Set two different temperatures to each side, adjust fan speed. It's all right there. There are hard buttons for this as well, which is good to know. Moving over, I already showed you sat nav to your phone. There's your full phone settings. When we pair a phone, all of our uh, contacts will show up there. And you've got full settings to really customize this car as well, which is good to see. So moving down from that, we've got our lane departure warning, because this car does have lane departure warning and blind spot monitoring. I'm in, I'll mention that too, because this car is, has got all the safety features. It's got all the safety, fac, uh, safety pack and the tech pack as well and the comfort convenience pack. Uh, because it's got the seats it just the only thing this car isn't optioned with is the push button start which is uh it's fantastic to see that this does have all the options moving down from that we can turn off our auto stop start function and we've got our hard controls for our dual zone climate control as well as our volume knob and tuning knob as well just down from that here we've got our four-wheel drive setting so you can actually set it to what terrain you're going to drive on and it will engage the four-wheel drive mode uh, as appropriate to those conditions you've got your four-wheel drive low gearing here on the knob and your hill descent control as well on on the other side of the, the auto, we've got our USB auxiliary SD port and a 12 volt socket. Moving to the actual auto gearbox itself, you can pop it into drive and go sideways, manually shift through the gears if you want. That will help if you are towing something or going over tricky obstacles. Now moving up here, looking at our screen in reverse, we move our steering wheel and the lines move with it to project where the car is going and it's just such a big nice clear picture that high mounted reverse camera with nothing really blocking its vision really gives you a full view of uh, where you're going which is good to see now here is our electric handbrake if you're driving and you stop and go into park it will automatically engage uh, to disengage it you press down and it disengages to re-engage it you just flick it up and the parking brake is back on we've got two front cup holders as well as a leather wrapped center console with once again the white stitching lifting up this we do have in here another usb port and a 12 volt socket as well as nice little coin holders nice deep storage compartment and i'll drop this down as well there we go, and a top compartment as well. You can keep your phone or, and, or other things in there. They've got a little hole so you can run the cord if you were charging your phone in there. It's all really, really well planned out. Now, uh, moving over, um, just look at the, the footroom, the quality of the leather seats. This car presents really well. I'll point out as well really quickly over here, we do have this nice wood grain finish in the doors um, too, which goes really well with the rest of the car. So now I'm gonna get the camera person to pan around the interior of the car and show you the quality of the car while I check out the service history with this vehicle. Uh, this car has done 47,000 Ks, uh, which is quite good as well. Very low in mileage, especially for a diesel. Um, I really haven't, I can't fault this vehicle. There's just, it's yeah it's got it's got every everything in its favor so let me just flick through to find the section there we go so it has had a few services done it's done it's been done by time so it's had its 50k service done um and an intermediate service done even though it's only done 47,000 ks uh which is very good so it's not due for another service um for, for until 57,000 k's which is 10,000 kilometers away um, or another six months considering it's got brand new tires and the paint is in near perfect condition this car looks like it, it doesn't look like it's done 47,000 k's it looks like it's only done 20. so i'd like to thank you for taking this time to watch our walk around video of our 2014 jeep cherokee limited if you have any questions please give us a call on 9907 and one of our friendly staff would be happy to help with your inquiry